So I know this conference is called Archaeology, but it's actually called Paleontology 18, just for this first. Uh. So I'm going to take you on a journey in the next 20 minutes, set about 7 million years ago, to Abu Dhabi's western region. And many people don't realize that not only elephants, but many other animals lived in the western region at this time. Actually, we have a huge number of fossil sites. This is all these green dots represent locations where you can find fossils from between six and eight million years ago. So this is a huge area. If you notice these pink triangles, the pink triangles on this map show where there are trackway sites. So this is really a quite extraordinary thing. You know, we don't have anywhere else in the world where we have this exposure level of fossils and trackways. So it's 200, more than 200 kilometers from east to west and up to 80 kilometers deep into the desert. One of the first sites we found was Malaysia One, and this was local people who actually led us to this trackway, and they thought that these tracks represented giant camels, because of course to a Bedouin, you know, they imagine camels in the desert, you know, should be giant camels, but we very quickly realized that these are not. Now, the, the trackways are quite hard to record, but we had an American uh, archaeologist with us who's an expert in flying kites, and it wasn't until we visited Malaysia One and made this extraordinary mosaic of photographs that we realized we had this really impressive uh, trackway. And if you uh, see on here, you can see a whole line of tracks going from left to right and a, a separate trackway crossing diagonally from bottom left to top right. This is really um, an astonishing record of animal behavior from seven million years ago. This is preserved in rock, so the sediment has eroded down to this layer. We actually, with some of my colleagues, this is with um, um, Abdullah al Kabi and uh, Abdul Rahman and Faisal, once we had this photograph, we were able to ground truth the actual tracks and take measurements on them. So we took measurements on them, and we were able to calculate the width, the pace, the stride of the elephants. And we published um, a scientific paper on this with the digitization of this track. And this is a really rare opportunity to capture animal behavior seven million years ago. And there are modern studies on locomotion of elephants. We contacted different experts around the world on the size of elephants, the speed that elephants walk. And we were able to get some modern data to compare with our track data. So we were able to go directly from the measurements on our track to infer actually that we have a single male lone elephant going from the bottom left to top right. And we had a, have a herd of mostly female and juvenile elephants. So this is quite extraordinary. Seven million years ago, and then we're able to calculate something about animal behavior. Now, actually, in the fossil record of Abu Dhabi, we have three types of elephants. We have this one at the top, which has recently been renamed, and I'm proud to say that it's now called Stego tetrabelodon emiratus, and, uh, <laughs> which was a reclassification of Bill uh, Sanders, who visited, and we're just about to publish a new book on that taxonomy. We also have dinotheriums, and we also have an amibelodon, a shovel-type elephant. But the commonest elephant we have is this four-tusked elephant, top right. And this is the beautiful reconstruction painting of Maurizio Anton of this event taking place at Malaysia. Now, why is this significant? Well, it's the earliest evidence found in the world of herding behavior in elephants, because elephants today behave. You have lone males going off, as you know, bull elephants, and then you have the females and juveniles uh, staying together. So this is encapsulated in the fossil record. We're seeing that the behavior of elephants is uh, similar to their modern ancestors. So we published the, that article. It generated a huge amount of interest around the world, as quite rightly it should. We were on BBC News, and it was in scientific magazines all around the world. Um, it was really good. Um, now, we discovered, uh, af after finding Malaysia 1, we found Malaysia 2. One of the th interesting things about when we had the photograph, we could actually see not only elephant tracks, but we could see tracks of other animals. 
that is not possible to see with the human eye when you're standing in the site, but when you have the digital photograph, it's easier to do pattern recognition. This is another site nearby, and this, these are not human prints. Um, these are actually, it's a, it's a print of a narrow-bodied animal, a kind of ungulate, possibly a horse, walking. And you can see the prints are quite different, but again, preserved. So again, this is giving us an incredible insight into these ancient sites. So we knew about Malaysia 1 and Malaysia 2, and then about seven or eight years ago, we discovered near Bidal Matawa. Bidal Matawa is a small town just to the west of Gayathi. Southwest of the uh, town, there's a small outcrop, and here we discovered more prints of elephants. Our department protected the site with a fence and gate, I have to say a word of warning, these sites are delicate. This site is protected now by our fence, but a bulldozer had gone in here previously. There's actually, if you look carefully, there's actually two small prints here, but a caterpillar has gone across here. So if bulldozers and heavy machines go across some of these sites, we can lose these sites, which is why our site, our department, is running to put fences around as many as we can find to protect them because if we let the bulldozers in, these sites will be, will be gone, really. Um, I'm going to tell you now about uh, Bida Alginia. Bida Alginia is a new site. This was discovered um, um, right in the middle of the desert, literally. This is, this is where Malaysia won the first site I showed, the site we published. Malaysia 2, that has that antelope trackway. And then this is a new discovery out here. Bidal Matawa is somewhere off to the left here. So we have one, two, three, four, and then we have a trackway up, up here. This site, Mubarak al Mazrui, he lives in Medina Zayed, and he spends a lot of the time driving around in the desert, patrolling our sites, checking that the site is okay and that no one is causing damage to it. Um, it's a really um, a beautiful area. We went to the site, and I remember this day being there with, with Ahmed here, and I think with Abdullah, and it was June. It was so hot. So the first time I saw the site, everything was kind of white. When we tried to photograph everything, it was kind of difficult to, to deal with. But um, it became clear, and here you see Mubarak Mazrui, walking off, and here you can see a line of prints. You see one here, one here, one here, one here. He's following, actually, the line that the elephant is walking on. So, so rather nice that we have, sort of, uh, as I said, real um, uh, Bedouin people from the local region helping track the ancient elephants. You know, I, I really like this. And Mubarak, because he had worked with us, he joined our department several years ago, and, and Ahmed and I took him and showed him Malaysia 1 and Malaysia 2. So once Mubarak understood what the fossil trackway site looks like, he went off, and then he discovered this new site himself. So that's really uh, fantastic, you know, just to show that how local people in the Western region can make their own discoveries, you know, still, still today. And Mubarak is a great character. He helps us on some of our other projects, uh, the camel site and other things that you'll hear about later. Um, there's me getting hot and bothered, trying to uh, our best to record these tracks. I mean, the obvious thing with these tracks is that you need aerial photographs and you need to be there at good times of day. This was, I think, midday in the 25th of June, so you can imagine the... Uh, what the temperature was like and stuff, but the, um, this site, um, we, what we did, which we always do, when we discover a new site, we make a map of it to try to understand how to protect the site. So we drove around in the car and tried to make a, a, an outline for proposing how to protect the site. That's always the first step that we do. And then I go to Jabber and I say, Jabber, Jabber, do we have budget? to pay for fence. We need more money. Always we need more money to pay for fencing. And uh, so we have, to, we have to get some money from the other departments to help us pay for fencing the sites. Um, anyway, 
So we knew this beta alginia site is special. We knew that it was something, um, something interesting is going on here. We wanted to go back. So we went back there just in December, so just only a short, short time ago, we went back there and we started cleaning and studying uh, the tracks. Um, often you have to photograph them at different times of day, early in the morning, late in the afternoon. You, we try, sometimes it's better not to clean them because the dirt inside the track makes it more visible. The, the, the elephant tracks act, act as a trap for archaeological material, actually. Sometimes you find flint debitage in each of the <laughs> elephant footprints. You also find ostrich eggshell from the extinct Arabian ostrich hunted in the more recent Holocene period. You can imagine, because these seven million year old surfaces are hard limestone, they acted as a trap for water. So you, you find a lot of prehistoric activity going on, Neolithic sites around the edges of these depressions, because you can imagine in the Holocene optimum there would have been lakes in this area. So you actually have a combination of paleontology and archaeology, just because of the uh, geology and the fortuitous situation. So here we are anyway, exposing some of the um, tracks. And then this is um, a recent attempt to mosaic some of the aerial photographs. It's just very preliminary. I haven't finished cleaning the image yet, but this was uh, Walid uh, Omar from our team who took this mosaic of pictures. And you can see, actually, you can see an individual track coming up here. You can see another individual here and another individual here. So if you follow the Malaysia example, you would say, well, these are male single male elephants walking around. The prints are quite big. They're comparable in size to some of the Malaysia ones. So this side looks like single male elephants walking around. As opposed to the previous site I showed you where I said that it looks like they're having a disco. There's female elephants and juvenile elephants all sort of milling around. That seems to be more a herd. So what's interesting is that these sites, we're starting to find the, the same kind of information like at Malaysia, but variability in the landscape, which is, which is really, really fascinating. Finally, um, Jebel Mamiya. Jebel Mamiya is a, was a known fossil site to us. Jebel Mamiya is located not far from the Mirfa Hotel. Those of you who have been to Mirfa, this is the Mirfa Hotel. This is the power plant down the road and the desalination and, and plant. And there's a line of pylons um, uh, coming out here and the various pipelines and things that join here. Um, Jebel Mamiya is an is a outcrop with, with fossils. And this site is very important now because it's the only site where we have in the same stratigraphy, we have fossils in these hills here and in this outcrop here, and we have evidence of a trackway. So this helps to tie it in because obviously the presence of certain animals gives us an idea on dating of the trackways. If you find Hipparian horse fossils, it has to be late Miocene. It has to be six to eight, nine million years old, something like that. So this is a very important new discovery because we've been many times to Jebel Mamiya and it's only on this recent trip that we realized that there are these prints. This is Jebel Mamiya, the fossil outcrop, and many times we've been round here, and we never spent enough attention on the smaller hill in the distance. We thought, oh, that's rubbish for fossils there. I remember going here before and not noticing that there are some of these elephant prints here. So what's very interesting at Jebel Mamiya, we have some very curious thing going on with the sediments and the preservation. These look like uh, uh, elephant prints again, but they're very strange and convoluted. It's the way the, again, the difference in the sediment, difference in the erosion, difference in the way. You have to imagine a bit like Sabka, you have these bacterial mats and things, and it can lead to distortion of the uh, prints and things. Anyway, besides um, elephant uh, prints, like I said, we find many elephant fossils. We're lucky in that we have uh, a complete idea on the size of, of these ancient elephants because at 
the old excavations at Shui Hat in the 1980s, we have pieces of a juvenile elephant. But here at Omolishtan, and we have, again, I have to thank a, a gentleman from the Western region. This is uh, Hamed uh, Al Mansouri, and he lives in Bidal Matawa. And again, he's one of the environment agency uh, rangers who drives around in the desert. And he found the site at Omolishtan, and we actually have the left leg and the right leg of one of these elephants. We also have a tibia, and this is us actually excavating this elephant, looking rather exhausted here. We'd put a rather large plaster jacket on here. And then once we got the plaster jacket on, it was so heavy, we couldn't lift it out of the ground. So we had to use wooden planks and mud, and we actually used a Nissan Patrol and a, and a car tow rope to help pull it I slide it out of the ground, which is rather alarming, but it worked well. We slid it out one direction, then we lifted the planks up, reversed the pickup round, put the planks in the pickup, and then we're able to push it, slide it on a sort of mud slide. So it worked uh, very well. Just to summarize, um, we now have six sites with elephant trackways, Laysa 1, Laysa 2, Bidal Matawa, Sharia, Bidal Guinea, and Jebel Mamiya. Four of these sites are protected with fencing, and the other two sites, of course, we plan to protect uh, them in the near future. All of these sites date to between six and eight million years ago. Um, aerial documentation by kite photography shows that we have not only tracks of elephants, but also some of other animals. These are some of the best preserved, like I said, best known anywhere in the world. Um, unfortunately, these sites are not so easily accessible. Many of them are in security zone areas, but we hope in future we can overcome that and some of these people will be able to uh, visit in the future. Thank you very much.